What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to take a brief look at Event Kit and working with events and calendars in your iOS app. So here's the app we're going to put together and we're going to basically be doing a few things with this plus button. So at the moment, it's hooked up with the editing context for a brand new event. So here the user can of course go ahead and change the title, location, you know, the start time, end time, you know, all day, repeats, reminders, all that good stuff that you would expect from any sensible, you know, application that lets you do this stuff. We're also going to take a look at how to allow the user to choose calendars, you know, be in a view context and not just edit um, and all that stuff that, you know, comes in any calendar app. So if that all sounds good to you, make sure you start by dropping a like down below. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit subscribe for daily iOS videos. Let's get into the video. All right, we're going to get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. And let's go ahead and call this Exploring Event Kit. Make sure your language is Swift. And let's change this from Swift UI back to UI Kit and Storyboard. And let's go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. And first things first, we're going to go ahead and pick a simulator, the 12 Pro Max. Go ahead and hit that Play button to build and run. And let me also expand our Xcode window while we're at it to uh, give us more room to work. So here's our simulator. It looks like everything's looking good. Let's jump into our view controller and get started. So we're going to start by importing two frameworks. We're primarily going to be working with uh, Event Kit UI, but I do want to also call out that Event Kit is available to you as well, which I'll do a separate video on. So Event Kit and Event Kit UI let you interact with reminders, calendars, and events, as the name implies. Uh, on the user's device. So there's a couple of things we're going to explore, but let's uh, start with a quick example of, you know, actually creating one of these event kit UI controllers and using it. So you can actually do EK view controller, and you'll see that there are a, a variety of options, well, two in this case. So there is an edit controller, and then there's a view controller. So let's pick this first one here and go ahead and open it up. And what you'll see is, um, there's no really options on here. And if we go ahead and try to assign the delegate of this, that definitely exists. So we can go ahead and say that is self. And we can go ahead and uh, conform to that delegate here. So we want the event view delegate, just like that. And that error will go away. And next up, we're going to try to present this view controller. So let's go ahead and say animated true. So this is in view did load. So let's go ahead and move this to another function. And we'll say, I don't know, did tap add. Let's go ahead and paste that in there. And we're going to add a uh, add button at the top right uh, in our navigation bar. We're going to set up a navigation controller momentarily. But we're going to create this uh, as a system add button. The target will be self. And the uh, action will be a selector and we're going to use did tap add down below and just make sure to annotate it objc to make sure that it can be used as a selector and before we go ahead and actually give this a run jump into your storyboard for a quick second select your controller go to editor and just select embed in navigation controller feel free to do this programmatically as well if you would like i'm just doing it in the storyboard for the sake of time we're going to also make the title the large style. And let's go ahead and give this a title of events, just so it looks a little nicer than what the plain app template gives us. So go ahead and do that and give it a run. And let's see what we've got. So it looks like we have an error. So let's see what I botched here. So let's come back here. So it looks like we're not conforming to this because there are some required uh, functions. So we'll bring that in. So uh, this is the only required function, event view controller uh, did complete. So I'm just going to actually cut this and move this to the bottom of our class here and go ahead and give it a run one more time. Everything should succeed and we should see a plus button here. So if we go ahead and uh, hit it, what you'll see right now is uh, this app doesn't have access to your calendar. You can enable access in privacy settings. So there's a couple things that you need to understand. One thing is um, you need to request permission for reminders and calendars and things of that nature. So you could come in here and say, 
um, calendar usage description. We can say something along the lines of please allow uh, access to see stuff. And if you want to work with reminders in particular, you can also say, let's see, privacy. Let's try that. And let's see, I think there's no other calendar one, but there is one for uh, reminders. So there is a reminders uses description. So here we're going to copy and paste this description text and just drop it in there. And let's see if this particularly gives us uh, the request out of the box. So it looks like it does not. So what we probably want to go ahead and do is request the access ourselves. So in this particular controller, if we click into it, let's see if there is a mechanism on the controller to request access. My hunch is that there is not. It has an event that we can assign. We can allow editing and allow calendar previews, but no particular way to uh, request permission via the controller. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let's go ahead and see if we can um, figure out the actual, uh, the actual permission case ourselves. So I imagine it's something along the lines of EK uh, authorization status. And we can actually probably go ahead and try to get this status ourselves. So um, let's go and quickly, let me take a look at how we can go ahead and request this status. All right, so to go ahead and actually request authorization, what we need to do is first and foremost, create a instance of an event store. So we're gonna say let's store is an EK event store. And this store is basically where our events are, you know, written to and read from. So what I wanna go ahead and do um, in this did tap add is we're gonna say store, there is a request uh, access and we're gonna go ahead and say, we wanna request access to either, you know, reminders or events. We're gonna focus on events. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, success and error. And we can now go ahead and say, if success and error equals nil, we can go ahead and present this view controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and say dispatch queue, main, async, we're just gonna present this. The other thing to keep in mind is this particular controller is meant to show uh, information about a particular event. So we need to assign this event here. So by default, if we just present this, what you're gonna see is um, we're not gonna actually have any information to show. Let's go ahead and say self optional there and put weak self here so we don't cause a uh, memory leak with a retain cycle. And let's go ahead and run our app again. We're gonna go ahead and tap on that. It's gonna ask for permission or we're gonna grant it. And now we don't see that annoying lock logo. So we also don't see any event here. So that's not particularly helpful. So let's go ahead, now that we actually have uh, the permission here, let's try that one more time. Let's make sure that it's still going down the same code path, which it should be. Let's go ahead and create our new event here. So to create a new event, it's actually really simple. You're just gonna go ahead and create a EK event, and you just wanna go ahead and create it with a given store. So we're gonna say self.store. So we can actually do, cause we don't want the store to be optional. It's gonna yell at us we can actually go ahead and unwrap it. So we're gonna say guard let store is self uh, dot store because we are using weak self as a reference. And now we can go ahead and say simply store like that. And on this particular uh, new event, we can go ahead and start typing um, or rather adding different properties. So we can go ahead and say uh, events YouTube video and if you go ahead and type in, uh, you know, just like autocomplete, you can go ahead and see there's a variety of things you can, you can actually set on this. So there is uh, the start date, there is also an end date, um, there's locations, you know, attendees, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go ahead and assign as many properties as you want. And once you're done, you can actually assign it to the event property here. The last thing we're going to do is actually instead of presenting that view controller directly, what I'm gonna do is we are going to wrap it inside of a navigation controller and I'm gonna go ahead and present it um, as such. And you'll see why momentarily. And let's go ahead and give this a run and we'll go tap on this plus. And now it shows us, um, you know, here are event details. 
and we can go ahead and hit done. And in this particular case, we're not doing anything on done because um, we actually aren't calling or doing anything in this function. So here, what it's saying is um, on this controller, did complete with this action. And if we actually click into this action, you'll see there is a done, responded, or deleted. So the first thing we probably want to do in here is uh, dismiss this controller with an animated and completion of nil. So let's go ahead and uh, hit plus here. I'll go ahead and hit done, and it goes away just like that. So the other thing you might be wondering is, okay, now we know how to go ahead and view the creation of a new uh, event with this controller. What about other different types of controllers that this provides? So if we go ahead and say other VC, we can see that there is one other controller here, which is an event edit view controller. And what we can go ahead and do is what you can do is pass in um, a root view controller directly into here. Um, it looks like this is a particular uh, navigation controller. So let's go ahead and click into this and let's see what properties it provides. So there's an edit view delegate, there's an event store, there is also an optional event you can provide, um, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of using this one down here, let's go ahead and use other VC dot event store is going to be store. And we're going to say other VC dot event is going to be our new event. And let's see if this yells at us um, for using this directly. So we'll say this is other VC, animated will be true, and the completion will be nil. Let's go ahead and uh, comment this stuff out and give this guy a run and let's see if we get anything different. We're gonna go ahead and hit plus and now what you'll see is you actually get into the um, new event creation um, UI versus the other one. In, in that case, you created the event already and you were in the view context. So here we have the ability um, to allow the user to edit all this stuff, right? So they can say it's an all day event, the start end, they can set if it repeats. So if you have an app where you wanna allow the user to add something to their calendar, you can pre-fill all of this stuff and just present it um, for their uh, editing and use case, right? Here we can go ahead and uh, delete it and uh, we haven't hooked up the delegate, but you can um, get this action and actually just dismiss the controller. And um, that's basically the, the quirks of this uh, event kit controller. The other thing that I wanna go ahead and briefly talk about is the calendar chooser controller. So there is a calendar chooser uh, controller. So let's see if I can find it here. EK calendar view controller calendar chooser. So it looks like this calendar chooser directly. Let's see what the type of this is and uh, if it is a controller or not. It looks like it is. Let me go ahead and select into it and make sure it is a view controller. Indeed, uh, it in fact is. It's just not named the best. So we're going to go ahead and say VC is this. Let's go ahead and present this directly. And let's take a look at what this looks like. And I'm also going to, in the meantime, go ahead and comment all this business out so we don't run into redundant things happening. So let's go ahead and give that a run. And let's make sure I don't have any issues anywhere in here. Looks like we have an error. Let's see why we have an error here. All right. So this is yelling at me about... Type view controller does not conform to protocol ek event view delegate. Um, it should be, unless I screwed up the declaration down below. So let's go ahead and ah, we got to get rid of this one as well. Let's get rid of that. And let's give this a run once more. Looks like I just messed up one of those curly braces. So we're going to go ahead and hit plus, and we don't actually see anything in here because we don't have a store set, if I'm not mistaken. And we also um, don't have any particular calendars on the simulator to choose from. So this controller, if you take a look at it, you can initialize it with a selected style. You can also pick a display style. Um, and let's see, there is uh, the delegate property on here, shows done button, shows cancel button, as well as selected calendars um, directly on it that you can, it, it even tells you. So regardless of whether the chosen um, the chooser allows you to select one or multiple calendars. Uh, these calendars, the selection is always expressed as a set and it tells you why it's a set right there. So let's go ahead and say VC shows done button uh, is true and VC shows cancel button is also true. 
let's go ahead and wrap this in a navigation view controller with the root view controller of VC. So go ahead and give that a run. You're gonna go ahead and hit on plus and it's gonna tell you basically here are your calendars. Slightly awkward because we don't have any calendars. Um, and we also have not hooked up these buttons here. If you wanted to do that, you would basically hook up the VC's delegate to be self, but I'm not gonna do that um, for the purposes of this video. So um, this is a brief overview and primer really into the several other event kit related videos that I have in mind, just to give you a brief overview of you can use um, event kit to get calendars, reminders, and events. You need to request permission and update your info P list. And one interesting thing that, I mean, I thought was interesting back a couple of years ago when I started working with this stuff is calendars and reminders are grouped together under event kit. There is no such thing as a reminders kit. Um, and I guess it makes sense from a logical perspective of reminders and events are pretty similar. Uh, but if you ever want to work a reminders, just remember it's a part of events kit. So that's all I've got for you guys today. A little all over the place in this video as we kind of work through it together. Um, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, if you want to learn more about particular calendar things. I've got some videos planned for that. And of course, like the video if you found it helpful, informative, enjoyed watching it. So um, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.